It's the final week of the Mega Mattress Event at Ashley Home Store. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Pay no interest for eight years on queen mattresses from Tempur-Pedic and iComfort, both starting at just $21 a month. Or save up to $1,000 on select queen mattresses from Beautyrest and Sealy Posturepedic. Hurry in now for the Mega Mattress Event. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store. This is home. Offer subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payment required. See store for details. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning and welcome to the Parenting Aces Radio Show on Blog Talk Radio's UR Tennis Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and we are going to be chatting with Johan Creek, who those of you who have been listening to my show know Johan. He's been on the show several times in the past, and uh He has some exciting news about his Junior Tennis Academy, which I'm looking forward to sharing with you and learning more about. But before I bring Johan on the air, I want to just give another shout-out to our Saul Schwartz Safe College Tennis All-In Junior Tennis Tournament coming up August 20th and 21st at the Suburban Club in Baltimore. It's presented by Hollabird Sports and is going to be a phenomenal experience for our junior players. Wilson Tennis is a big sponsor of the event and is donating an incredible prize package with rackets, a bag, clothes, shoes, string, you name it. And it's just going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. So registrations are still open. We still have spots available in the draw. I hope you will take a look at it. You can get to the tournament registration page by going on the Parenting Aces Facebook page. The link is pinned to the top. It is all over our website. It's all over our Twitter feed. So please, please, please consider bringing your junior player players (laughs) to Baltimore next month and getting them involved in this awesome event. And uh, I I hope I'll meet several of you up there. I'm planning to be there the whole weekend and uh, have been intimately involved in the planning of this event along with an incredible committee of folks. So um, please consider signing your kids up and come join us up in Baltimore in August. Okay, so plug done. (laughs) And now I want to just bring Johan on the air Johan Creek, welcome to the Parenting Aces Radio Show, and thanks so much for getting up and joining us on the air today. Hi, Lisa. Thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure. Absolutely. So you and I have chatted so many times about junior tennis and college tennis and junior development and your experiences growing up in tennis and. I want to encourage my listeners, if you haven't already, to go back and listen to the podcast with Johan because his development story is pretty unique coming from South Africa and, um, you know, uh, having a a very different uh, development than I would suspect most of our juniors here in the States. And it's, it's always interesting to hear how things are done in other parts of the world, but Johan, you've been in Charlotte the past few years um, running a very successful junior tennis academy there and uh, recently announced that you're making a move down to Florida to join PGA. And so I'm just anxious to kind of jump in and hear what's going on and why the change and, and what's to come for junior players joining you down in Florida. Yes, thank you very much. Now, it's uh, we are very excited about the opportunity that came our way, and um, I want to thank PGA National, especially James Gelfont, who's the general manager there, and the staff and the PR people, and also uh, Bob Werman, who's the director of tennis, who is the guy I contacted first through uh, my friend uh, <clears throat> Ms. Wyman from uh, from the Little Mo's, because they have the international Little Mo's there in December. <clears throat> so through that conversation, uh, we we met and we talked and uh, you know it's just been a whirlwind of decision making and, and pretty amazing stuff. So we're very excited. Obviously, you know Florida and Southern California and any of the sun, sun, sun sunny areas of the country is where most of the tennis is being being played and where most of the academies are. So uh, you know it's always been my goal to uh, to have a place in Florida as well. It just happened to be this is an unbelievable opportunity. Obviously, PGA National is an absolute first rate facility. But most importantly, the people there are welcoming, welcoming us with open arms, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, kick off there early September and 
and get rolling. I have such a following now and also the fact that we are starting to get more and more international students. i got students from Poland already training with us that are going to play Orange Bowl and uh, Eddie Herr and those types of tournaments. So, you know, Florida is just such an unbelievable hotbed for tennis and uh, numerous other things that I think is quite different from uh, from here. What we are in Charlotte, obviously we have some winter time here that is difficult and even in a it's a pressing thing to have bad weather in the snow areas and stuff, and we do have some cold weather here. So it's a it's a difficult thing to to run an academy out of a out of a tennis facility that it's <clears throat> privately owned and it's also a country club. So it's just tough. So uh, Florida, you can play pretty much year round. Um, you know, so it's just uh, a lot of pluses to be in Florida, especially in the junior side of things. And uh, tennis is growing in Florida. The 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 the, the, to- the tennis tournaments, the junior tennis tournaments that are there are second to none. So it just all makes more sense for us to be in that arena. Got it. And, I mean, you're right about Charlotte and the weather. We have the same issues here in Atlanta. And, you know, for those of you listening in other parts of the country, what people don't really understand is they think south and they think warm weather and that it's warm all year round and perfect and yada, yada. But the reality is we have – a lot of rain, we have um, extreme cold weather in the wintertime, not like in the in the north, but we don't have the facilities in this part of the country to handle snow and ice and those things, nor do we have the number of indoor tennis facilities that are in existence in the north and northeast. So when bad weather hits, it really puts a damper on tennis training, it impacts the academies, it impacts the teaching pros. I mean, business as usual pretty much comes to a screeching halt. That's absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, what I also found is that, um, you know, a lot of tournaments uh, start to pick up in the spring and, and, and into the summer. And even if we train outdoors in the springtime, you know, suddenly you got to go to Alabama, which is brutally hot. And, you, you know, I was there for Southerns and uh, go to other tournaments. And a lot of our kids that have been training really hard through the winter, even if we have indoor facilities, which I did have, uh, the fact of the matter is they are not climatized to the heat and the hot weather. So they are behind the eight ball when they get to these major tournaments in the in deeper south where it's really, really humid. And you can see the kids start to wilt. So it's it's a tough thing. You know, we had even in the pro, in the pro times when I played, I mean, when we play, say, in London in November and you have to go to South Africa and play outdoors, uh, in the dead of summer, I mean, it's such a huge um, change that, you know, it takes you at least a couple of days to get even used to the to the different areas to play. So it's it's a tough thing. And, you know, if you if you keep training in that environment uh, with the weather and stuff, it just makes it that much easier to play in uh, really tough conditions. So we see a, <clears throat> a lot of kids wilt because of that uh, situation with the weather. Yeah, and even if you're diligent about hydrating and eating properly and taking the proper nutrition on court with you, um, there. <laughs> if you've never played in Mobile, Alabama, in the heat or uh, down in South or Florida, or Macon, Georgia, in yeah, Florida, Macon, Georgia, Macon, is hot. oh my God, <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure there's any place hotter on the planet, and uh, you know, and a lot of the facilities don't have shade, so these kids are out in the brutal heat and. Granted, I mean, we all grew up playing in those conditions as well, but as we all know, the game has gotten so much more physical and and the exertion level required to excel and move through these draws nowadays is very different from when I was a kid. And, um, you know, so I I hear you about the the climate and the, the need to be in a place where these kids are training in the toughest conditions. So... How are things going to change for you in terms of how you approach your junior development and training these kids down in Florida versus being in Charlotte, or will they change? Well, obviously, uh, it's a brand new venue, so uh, it's uh, we're very excited about uh, the the traction we've gotten so far. Like I said, uh, it has been a, a great experience so far. I'm, I'm not even on the ground yet, and people are booking spots and calling every day and saying, listen, you know, I want to book a spot for my four kids. And yesterday we had a family call for four of their children. So <clears throat> it's quite amazing uh, that this this has gone out there. And funny enough, uh, you know, we've had some incredible offers from around the country, including California. So I'm more of a Florida boy. Uh, you know, my family, my wife's a Polish-American and her family live in Germany. So 
It makes a little bit more sense for us to also have a East Coast presence. But because I lived in Naples, Florida for 36 years, I know Florida pretty well. And, uh, you know, having uh, having been there for so long, played my professional career out of Florida, you know, it just makes a lot more sense to be there. So uh, this came along. PGA National needed to have uh, an, an add-on for their tennis programs. They have 20 tennis courts in an incredible hotel with spa and fitness centers. Yeah, they've got five golf courses. I mean, it's just a first-rate facility <clears throat> that, like I said, welcomed us with open arms. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about the, the the prospects, not only from the local market. I think there's a, it's an underserved market, perhaps in that part of Florida. It's way north of Miami and so forth. So um, the fact that we are starting to get so much traction in overseas kids, I think that's going to be a big uh, a big factor for us in Florida. That wasn't a factor for us when we first started our academy down in Sarasota. But here is a it's a great opportunity, and um, you know my my philosophy is when you hard work always gets uh, rewarded, and uh, if you have a kid with talent and they have a hard working ethic, and you have great supporting staff with their parents and stuff, and it's all a big journey. You know, there's not a single journey that is exactly the same. Uh, if people have to really understand where my journey came from as a professional. It is probably one of the most unlikely scenarios of ever making it in the world of tennis, never mind winning Grand Slam. So, you know, talent comes from uh, from all all parts of the world. Uh, it's how it's been nurtured and how it, it blossoms, and, and, and some blossom in, 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 a, in a very structured way. You know, tennis has changed dramatically in the last 20 years, and coaching has also changed quite a bit, obviously with the technology of rackets and strings. The, the, like you said, the physicality of Tennis is being <clears throat> increased, and now you have basic systems that are being developed for uh, for players to excel. And I think you can't discount that at all. However, I'm much more of a a sensei, like Frank Giampolo says about my tennis. You know, I uh, I try and instill in kids still a little bit of wonder, and it's not just oh, you know, I'm supposed to be this because I'm, I was told I was going to be this. You know, there's got to be a sense of uh, wonder too, and that's kind of the process of. Um, of, um, you know, being a talented kid and also uh, just to feel their way around and, and understanding that, you know, not everything is a system. There's a, tennis is a very individual sport. Uh, it's big business around the world, but, um, you know, it's it's a hard road. I mean, it's a very, very tough road to get to the, to the top echelons of men's or women's tennis. So, um, you know, my philosophy hasn't changed. Hard work does pay off. But uh, each kid is an individual, and each kid has to be dealt with in their own way and uh, a, a plan put in, in place for them to excel. So we are very excited about our our, our our position at PGA National, and I can't wait to get there and, and get going. And I'm probably going to be in the Far East within a short few weeks to uh, to drum up some more business there because people want us to, uh, to have affiliations in, in, in those parts of the world as well. Very cool. How will the new USTA Lake Nona facility impact you, do you think? No, I, I don't think uh, – look, I have a very good relationship with Martin Blackman. Uh, in fact, my wife uh, worked with him when he was a coach at uh, American University. Uh, you know, they've invited us to go up there and check it out and even hit and practice. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for uh, competing with other academies and bring them to, to their facilities. They're, they come to us and practice with our kids and play. I'm all for uh, really having some fun and, and, and have the kids being pushed. Uh, you know, I um, luckily for me, I don't rely just on American kids. I mean, I have, like I said, I've got sponsored kids from Poland, and I'm going to get more and more uh, involved with the Far East, especially China. It's a huge market. So uh, we're going to have a lot of international kids in that area. So, you know, we, we affect a wide range of business. I mean, it's not just... Uh, you know the academy itself, but we uh, we affect other coaches and in their income. We affect airlines. We affect hotels. We affect real estate, restaurants. You name it. I mean, uh, we drive quite a bit of business if you start uh, looking at it from every angle. So, um, it, it 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 is an expensive sport, and uh, I'm still working on some ways to uh, expand on the base for uh, funding those kids that that absolutely need funding, and that's one of the things that I would look at uh, very, very carefully over the next number of months. I've already made some uh, inquiries with some of my uh, my fabulous attorneys uh, down in Florida about uh, you know, a foundation and how we can uh, use that as a means to fund some of these talented kids that don't have the means and don't have the money 
um, you know, as you know, it, it takes so much more time now to be, become a professional tennis player and also to even get to D1. It's expensive, you know. So uh, <clears throat> so that's what we, uh, we, we're we going to look forward to. And I'm going to have quite a few things change uh, from what I've been doing here in Charlotte to where I'm doing it in Florida. I'll have a much wider platform to do what I need to do. And it's not just the academy. There's a lot of corporate stuff that I can do for the resort as well. Um, with regards to not only tennis but other sports as well. I'm an avid golfer, so, you know, with five golf courses, I think we have a pretty good, good template to do a lot of corporate in, in, environment uh, stuff and fun stuff and fundraisers. That'll be a great cross-training opportunity for your tennis kids, too. Teach them the game of golf, and they've got the course right there, and uh, how cool will that be? Well, there's not too many places in the world that you can boast that under one roof you have five five golf courses. I mean, world-renowned golf courses. They got the Honda Classic there, and you know, I just got so many friends in that area too. I mean, a lot of golfers live there in the Jupiter area, Ernie Els, and a lot of guys from South Africa. So um, it's it's going to be exciting. Uh, it's not going to happen all in one one fell swoop, but uh, I think over the next couple of years we will build up uh, quite a extensive network of doing some fun stuff there. That's fantastic. So you're talking about bringing players in from around the world to train, and, and, you know, I think that's incredible, an incredible opportunity for those kids, but also an incredible opportunity for the American kids that will get to be on the court with them and be exposed to different cultures and nationalities and traditions. And But, you know, I always kind of go back to this whole idea of, you know, at what point do we – focus on getting our American players up to speed and and back in the top echelons of the game, both in terms of college tennis and in professional tennis. And, I mean, we're seeing the American juniors do well, you know, on the international, uh, excuse me, international stage at the junior level, but there seems to be some sort of disconnect once they start Looking at the top D1 schools, we're still seeing a lot of international heavy rosters at the D1 level, and then certainly on the international level, you know, still, I mean, our American players, our young ones are coming up, but they're still not in the top 10. So how do you balance that? I mean, I I think it's got to be tough as an academy director, as a coach, as someone who's seen the game from the inside out. Well, I mean, I think this, uh, you know, this uh, this has been beaten around so much. I think it's all probably black and blue by now. But this this issue, it, it's it's a it's a difficult thing to pinpoint. I think, you know, <clears throat> let's face it, American tennis, uh, is, it, tennis in general in America is probably what sixth or seventh on the list. Whereas in many other countries of the world, especially like Serbia, where Djokovic is from, and, and, and Poland, uh, with all the women that came out of Poland or Polish, Polish heritage and so forth, um, you know, it's a hard thing to pinpoint. I think, uh, you know, n- nobody has a lock on talent. I mean, tennis was a big deal in Australia back in the 50s and 60s, even 40s. You know, we had uh, the Australians and the Americans back in those days were very, very dominant. And here and there, a sprinkling of Europeans. But since, you know, communism fell and, 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 and these countries in the Eastern Bloc sort of became free and kids wanted to get out of there, you know, that generation of parents instilled such a hunger in these, ch- in these children. And I think that has a role to play in it. It's maybe not every kid to this day is, is like that. I mean, there's been new generations since uh, the Berlin Wall came down in 89. And, you know, I just think that uh, there's many ways to look at it. Uh, I'm... I'm Frankly, I'm a little bit concerned uh, as to the disconnect between <clears throat> the NCAA and the USTA, and I think how they need to really cooperate a lot closer because the the options for kids now are getting fewer and fewer. I mean, we just saw Murray State bailed on their tennis program, and my old buddy Mel Purcell and his father Bernie was the was the icons of tennis at, at, at Murray State. So it, it's sad to see over the last 30, 40 years how tennis has dropped in the college ranks and how many programs have been nixed and how many have gone away. And I think that there needs to be a very concerted effort by the USTA and the NCAA to try and help college tennis in a big way because it is an incredible, incredible breeding ground for, for tennis now because, um, you know, 
you just have to look at the, the results of you know how many people on the men's side. I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm just talking because I'm a guy and I follow the men's tennis probably a little bit closer than the girls. But the fact of the matter is, you just have to look at how old the guys are that are winning tournaments. And uh, it was astonishing. I mean, the 17, 18 year olds winning Grand Slams is just not around anymore. And so the physical side of tennis demands a much more mature uh, athlete at the end of the day. So you could be done with college and still go and hit the pro tour. And uh, so, but there's many different paths to follow this uh, this tour on and to become a professional. But you know, I just think that there needs to somehow be a lot more cooperation between the USTA and uh, how college tennis is being developed and how that the two entities are mass- massive and how they can impact it. I don't have all the answers, and I don't pretend to be having all the answers. But, you know, these uh, these college guys go overseas and recruit players, and those kids are hungry, and they want to come to America, and they will they will do whatever they can. And, you know, there's a lot of talent in, in Europe. There's a lot of talent. And so, um, you know, some colleges recruit only uh, Americans, and I know of some people that recruit only women from America. And, uh, you know, I don't, uh, like I said, I, I'm not making the rules on the NCAA stuff. But, uh, you know, it's interesting that there's such a heavy, heavy influx of, of, of uh, foreigners into the college uh, scene. So, you know, you can talk no. about this subject for many, many months, I think, uh, many weeks rather. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting subject. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the other things, too, is that uh, I think that, there's just too much given to the youngsters in America at an early age. And the hunger may be, I wouldn't say completely doused, but it, it, it does impact uh, the psyche of a kid. You know, I mean, I was 17, 18 years old in high school, and I had a bicycle to ride to school. Now kids are getting so much stuff, and uh, the contracts are signed, and the parents are talking about it. And, you know, in social media, you, you can't do anything anymore, and it's blasted all over the Internet, and it's everywhere in the world people know about what you did. So... It's a whole different world, and uh, I just think, uh, you know, there are some hungry kids and there are some good, talented kids in America, but, uh, you know, um, I, I, I just think it's uh, it's going to take time. I mean, uh, the Jack Sox and all these guys, and now we saw this kid from Canada coming out. I mean, there's a lot of talent out there, and uh, you just have to see how they uh, how they mature and how, you know, how, uh, how it's going to play out. Well, it's funny. You, you mentioned the kid from Canada, um, Dennis Shapovalov. I watched him play last night, and uh, very impressive. He just won junior Wimbledon, so obviously he is a competitor, and, and he's a real deal. And it was interesting listening to Justin Gimmel's job comment during the match about him and, you know, kept saying he's the real deal, he's the real deal. Um, we'll see. He had a, an amazing win last night and was – very composed and impressive. So you have a kid like that. And then on the women's side, we look at another 17-year-old, Cece Bellis, who is from Northern California. And, you know, she's winning big matches on the women's side, but has flat out come out on social media and said, I'm going to Stanford. Uh, I am committed to play at Stanford, and I'm going to Stanford. And Stanford, by the way, won the national championship. So not a bad place to go to get yourself ready for the pro tour. But if you had a player like either of these young people, as a coach, which path would you guide them toward? Or is there, you know, a a set answer that you can give here? Or is it really that individual? Well, a very good question. Um, you know, and, and like I said, once you make that decision, um, you have to, uh, you know, you got to run with it. Um, I think what I see happening now, and that's just my opinion, and I'm sure, sure there's going to be people that differ with me, but look at the physicality that is required now to be at the very highest end of professional tennis. Let's put it this way. The amount of money that is made at the very top is obscene. But as soon as it drops below 75 in a world to 100 or beyond beyond 150, you're not making any money. So you have to look at the percentages of how many people are out there trying to become professional from the ITFs, lowest ITF events to the challengers and, uh, you know, the, the ATP, the WTA events up and up to the Wimbledons and the Grand Slams. You know, it's an extremely small percentage. 
So couple that with the fact that, uh, you know, I can get a free ride to go to college and I can, you know, play some professional tournaments and still, if I don't finish my career, I can go back and go to college. I mean, there are kids that are playing on the ITF circuit now that I know of that are uh, that are going to college when they're done. When they decide they are done with professional tennis, they can go back to college. And, uh, you know, I don't have the perfect answer for you, but I think you can discount the fact that the physical side of tennis uh, is now so demanding and that such a small percentage of people make it to the center courts of Wimbledon and make the big money that college, the college route is a very, very wise decision. Now, I'm not saying every kid has to do that. Uh, I didn't go to college. I went straight to professional at 17, and uh, but it was a very different time. So I would say if a kid comes to me, it will be, you know, a real, uh, you know, it'll be a real soul-searching situation with the parents and, uh, and and so forth to find out what is their goal and what is it. Some kids are just absolutely hell bent on going to play professional, and that's fine if they want to just go that route. You know, they know what the costs are, they know what parents needs to put in, and give them a couple of years to go out there and battle around. But you know, that biggest pitfall is that 18 to 21 age bracket. You know, you can be one of the best juniors in the world, but doesn't mean that you're going to be one of the best professionals in the world. Um, you know, the the road to uh, juniors that have won Wimbledons and stuff uh, is littered with corpses, with people that never made it on a pro tour. So there's no guarantees. But I, I would say it would be a very wise decision to look at college route uh, very strongly uh, and, 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 you know, the college tennis at the very high end D1 is, is a very good training and breeding ground for that kind of uh, furtherance of your tennis career, in my opinion, at this point in time. It's interesting because there are, you know, there's this group of young Americans right now that have foregone college to go straight out on the tour. And, you know, they're, they're doing okay out there. Um, they're not at the highest level yet, but no one would expect that. Yet we saw Nadal winning slams at 19, right? I think he, when he won his first, and it's, it doesn't look as though that's ever going to happen again unless something drastic happens with the game. Right. Well, I just, like I said before, I mean, the amount, of, the system that is now being developed uh, via the physical side of tennis. I mean, you now have scores and teams of people working on an athlete, like a NASCAR team, and that's now the norm. Back in the days, we didn't have that. I mean, I didn't have a coach that traveled with me every day. I didn't have a massage therapist. I didn't have a trainer. But now the guys make so much money that they can afford five, six people on a payroll. And uh, that's only at the very, very highest level. I mean, I don't think number 50 in the world can afford much more than a coach or a hitting partner, uh, never mind traveling with a with a hairstylist and a stringer. So um, <laughs> I just I just think that, uh, you know, if you are not 100% sure that you're going to make it on a pro tour and that, you know, you've had a serious conversation with your folks and with your your backers or your sponsors and your coach and they intimately know what kind of player you are. And it's also a mental thing, you know. There's a lot of kids with a lot of talent, but a lot of them that I've seen are soft. And, uh, you know, being soft in this world, forget it. You will not make it. You have to be one tough cookie out there to be to be able to sustain the onslaught because you're going to lose a lot before you win. I told my father when I was playing on the satellite tour in Florida in 1978, I arrived here. I was barely 19 years I wasn't even 19 years old yet. I turned 19 in April. I arrived here in February. And... Um, I started to play the satellite tour in Florida, the watch circuit, and then I went to the Southerns and the Carolinas and then sort of moved up as the weather turned better. And uh, I told my dad, I said, if I don't make it through this and uh, get to a point where I don't have to fight these piranhas in these smaller tournaments, um, I'm coming home. I'm coming home to form. And I was 100% convinced that if I didn't make it out of there, and I had a meteoric rise, I think it's because I was so scared and so driven <laughs> not to be fighting these guys day in and day out for a crumb, you know. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I made it out of there. And uh, that's that's uh, that's kind of what has to happen. I mean, only the toughest survive, really. 
And what I think a lot of people don't truly understand, besides the expense of being out there, which, I mean, there have been numerous articles written about it, and, you know, there's no doubt. I mean, we know how much we spend on junior tennis. You know, multiply that by, I don't know, two, three, four times that first year out on the pro tour and because of travel and other costs. I mean, it's crazy. But besides that, when you go out on tour as a teenager, you have to understand the teenager is in, a, in an adult world. Their peer group, the people they are around all day, every day, can be 10, 12 years older than them with much more life experience, much different life experience than a teenager would have at that point. And I'm, I'm not sure how healthy that always is. And especially oh now with social media. Especially yeah. now with social media. Yeah. No, you know, this is why it's so, uh, the structure has to be there to support. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult road. I mean, this is an individual sport. Uh, I think uh, in many ways team sports in America are actually a lot easier and a lot less expensive than tennis. But, you know, this is an incredible sport. Uh, it teaches you incredible life lessons in terms of perseverance. You know, it's just you and the ball and the other guy on across the net, and they could be 25,000 screaming fans for the other guy, and you can still beat them because it's you. It's your brain and your desire and what you have as a skill level. So it's an incredible sport for life lessons and to, to, to make you a, a better person. It's a great, great sport. But, uh, you know, like my friend Frank Giampaolo also said, I mean, you have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan you're going to be hit and miss. And, and for you to uh, think that you're going to make, make it in today's age uh, without a plan is ludicrous. You've got to have a plan. So, And the plan consists of, you know, what route am I going to go? Am I going to go straight professional? Am I going to go try professional for two, three years? Uh, have backers or my family? Um, you know, uh, there's, been, there's many families that have gone broke because they, they chased the dream. And that reality has got to be there too. I mean, that you can't avoid it. Uh, and then there are families that are, uh, you know, lucky enough to have the means to travel and and do it. But, you know, like I said, I um, I think that the percentage of of kids in the professional side making it in the big time is so minuscule that uh, the the option of going to college first now, especially like I said, because of the physicality of the desires for you to be in your 20s now to make it bigger, um, it's a real option. It's a real good option to go to college first. It's, I, I want to just point out that for those of, of my listeners that don't understand this, when a kid decides to turn pro, the federation doesn't just automatically welcome them in with open arms and offer to pay their coaching, their travel, their, their you know, trainers, everything. I mean, most of the time. The onus is on the player, him or herself, to come up with funding to support that dream. And this is a very real situation. And I, you know, I just, I hear stories a lot of, you know, kids that decide to turn pro and all of a sudden they're like, oh, my gosh, how am I going to pay for all this stuff that I've got to pay for? Um, it is a real financial concern. And not only that, what happens when you get injured and you can't be out there playing? You know, it's um, it's very tough and very frustrating. I It'll be interesting to see, Johan, how your clientele changes and develops with this move down to the PGA facility. And, you know, will you be training more future professional players or will you be training – more college-bound players or, you know, as, as we affectionately call them, lifetime, lifelong tennis players that are, no. you know, just in it to develop their skills. And do you have any predictions for how that's going to look, how your client base is going to look? Well, I think that uh, there are definitely going to be an element of coaches, uh, of uh, coaching going on with guys uh, and girls uh, focused on college, number one. I think that's definitely going to be a fairly substantial uh, part of our business. Um, having said that, I, I am seriously looking to partner with or start my own, and I, I'm, I'm in discussions with some very high-end people about this, but 
um, if I can get my foundation off the ground and we can have some money, I think um, definitely there will be a, a structure in place by which we are going to have. We're going to try and work in a similar fashion as what soccer does with some some of their minor minor leagues and, and upper league stuff and how they mold and fold these kids into professional athletes and then they own them. So, you know, I think it makes absolutely no sense for, for a person like myself who's going to spend a tremendous amount of time on developing a player just to hand them off to some agency that have done nothing to build that child up and they are the ones that reap the benefits. I think uh, you've got to look at this whole structure of how you fund these kids, how you coach them, how you make them great adults, how they can talk in front of television. I mean, you're talking about a whole list of check boxes, and uh, fund these kids, and, and you you own them from cradle to grave. I think that's a definite thing to look at. Um, so I will be talking to some uh, some different people about how to structure all of that. So, you know, I will personally pick the kids that I want to sponsor uh, through this uh, endeavor, and uh, and see if we can uh, make some serious inroads. You know, this coaching business, as good as I am and as good as any of these guys are, you know, the hard yards are put in by those those great coaches that are probably not as well known in the world of tennis. Yeah, you got all these guys on TV coaching the top guys, and that's wonderful. I think that's great. They deserve it. They've played their whole life, and they know the game, <clears throat> including myself. But there's very few people that have reached the, the levels of play that I've reached that are actually putting in the hard yards to build kids up. You don't build a kid up in one year. I mean, I've got a. I started with a six-year-old that's now starting to win little Mo's. He's nine years old and he's hitting one-handed backhands and he's going to make some noise. But there's no guarantee he's going to be a professional. But the way that we structure everything is, it's going to be pretty interesting to see where he goes in the next six, eight years. So for me, working with a kid to build somebody up for ten years just to hand him off to some agency to make millions of that child is is, is, is actually short-sighted, in my opinion. So we will come up with a different structure in my academy for that, for the professional side of things. That could be a global reach. So that's really what I'm looking for. And those kids that want to go to college, train them just as hard. And if they want to then from college go to professional side, they know where to go. They know where they're going to get the best training. They know where they're going to get the best physios, the best training. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and really understand what is coming if they want to play professional tennis. I think most parents, and that's why Frank Giampaolo is so important to have guys like him out there also talking to parents about what do, what is coming down the road. What is, what can they expect? So few parents have a have a clue about all the pitfalls and all the stuff. It's a it's a it's a it's a tough business. It's not easy. And uh, you know the junior things is just one aspect that you got to go through. And sometimes some of these young kids need to get away from the juniors and start playing ITFs right away because they're good enough and they just spin their wheels playing local stuff and even beating South, winning in Southern tournaments. I mean, they need to move on 15, 16 years old and start playing qualities at ITF seniors and stuff. So, uh, But every kid is different. So, you know, that's that's just, I think, we will have a business from cradle to grave at PGA National, and that's what I, I intend to do. And, you know, where my expertise probably is the most valuable is at the very higher end. Right. So, I mean, you just provided a really good segue to talk about your commitment to parent education at your academy. And you and I have, you know, exchanged communications several times over the years about making sure parents understand what their role is and, and what's coming down the pike, as you just mentioned. So, specifically, what types of meetings or materials or conferences do you suggest parents look at or do you uh, will you have those things available at your academy for parents um that is absolutely a prerequisite for me before a kid even signs up in my academy i'm going to sit down with the parents and we're going to vet out what is it that they expect from me what do they expect from their kid and do they understand what junior tennis is all about. Now, I have been around the block a bit with tennis, and I've been around the block now with junior tennis in America, and I've seen some of the awful stuff out there that made my blood boil. But, um, you know, these parents have to be educated. I think it's one of the most neglected part of junior tennis is, and I'm not shearing every parent. There's a wonderful, wonderful 
for the vast majority of parents are pretty cool about their kids going to tennis. They, they, they're loving parents. They, they support their kids the right way. But I've also seen horrors, horror stories and horrible situations. And you feel for the kids and you actually feel for the family because it's so disruptive. And, uh, you know, for me, the parent education is an absolute must with the M-U-S-T capital letters, triple, you know, exclamation marks. Because I think you are running the risk of dealing with problems later on that if you had nipped it in the bud and explained to parents beforehand, I think you would have a lot calmer uh, situation with, uh, with things arise and stuff. You know, the expectations are high and sometimes they're unrealistic. And, uh, you know, I'd rather not work with somebody that is going to be in that, in that, in that sphere where they, they, they just push their kids to death. And, you know, I, it, it's a really tough situation, but you got to educate the parents. You have to, absolutely have to. You know, it's interesting that your academy is going to be located in a predominantly golf-centered facility. The junior golf world has done an amazing job at parent education. And several years ago, I wrote an article about what junior tennis can learn from junior golf. And I have since, you know, followed um, the Junior Golf Association on Twitter to kind of keep track of what they're doing in terms of parent education. And it's so impressive. And I keep waiting for tennis to catch up and to really, you know, take a lesson from what's happening in the golf world. I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that by being in that same vicinity as golf, that, it's, you're not going to be able to help but have some of that rub off. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's an incredible opportunity for the players that are going to be working with you and for the families of the players that are going to be working with you to really get some high-quality, top-notch, useful education on what it takes to get these kids to their highest level, whatever that may be. And Absolutely. I mean, what – one of the things I love about you, Johan, is it's not only about creating professional players. I mean, you, you really are committed to looking at each kid as an individual and taking them to the highest level that they're capable of and dream of, whatever that may be. And Absolutely. So, no, yeah, I work I mean, just as hard with the kids. In just that regard. Yeah, I, I, I work just as hard today. I'm working just as hard with some kids that are only going to play college, uh, only going to play high school tennis. They want to make their high school team, and I do make them better. And then there are kids that like looking for D1 schools. I just placed another kid in a college in, in Florida. So, you know, I don't fail too often, but I have actually failed in some aspects dealing with the parental issue. And you would hope at, at times that parents recognize the value that you bring to the table. And there are many parents that do, and there have been some in my past that didn't, and uh, it, it becomes a problem, and it can become a cancer like a bad apple in a batch, and it can start uh, affecting other things. So I am seriously, seriously talking to some very, very good individuals, and I'd love for you to be part of this if you would like to, to bring a seminar to Florida, and maybe we do it once a quarter or maybe even more, I don't know, and do these parental things that touches on different subjects and uh, really, really make them understand that this is, uh, this is a serious job to have a, 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 to have a phenom junior tennis player and what the pitfalls are and what it takes and how much it costs and where you should probably look at first and, uh, you know, just do the whole gamut of things. And uh, there's just so much to be learned. And even the most hardiest of parents that are out there don't think you know it all because tennis changes all the time. The rules changes within the junior tennis world is baffling at times. So um, <laughs> there's just a lot yeah. of things that are that are on your plate. And if you are a new parent, you know, uh, that comes into this world, <laughs> you know, you better go to college on this, man. You cannot just go and by the seat of your pants, you know. Yeah, talk to people that have been around the block. That's always a great source of information. But, you know, uh, people like you and myself and Frank Giampolo, Alan Fox, uh, Jim Lear, all these people that have been in the trenches for decades that understands what's going on 
and are very current, uh, those are the people that need to uh, need to be heard. And I am very, very happy to create uh, an a incredible uh, platform for parents to find out information. And maybe that's something that collectively we can all work on. I would love that. And let me just say I'm very flattered to be included on that list of people. <laughs> and I would jump at the opportunity to, to work with you on a parent seminar. It's something I've been wanting to do as well. And I yeah, we can you know, go. We can we we can do it via internet as well. I mean, I have. Uh, I'm, I'm working. I'm building my own tennis app, and it'll be out hopefully the end of the summer. And I'm uh, I'm, I'm meeting with people uh, actually this afternoon about it, all this stuff. But you know, this is something that you can do uh, in, in a in a wide range of, of of reaching people through the internet. So I think there's some great technology now that we can do and and, and bring this message to as many parents as possible in many different languages. I think that's important. You know. For sure, for sure. Okay, so you've got a September 1st target date, is that right, to open? Yes. Did I yes. read that correctly? And so when you start, I mean, let's, let's talk nuts and bolts. When, as of September 1, what is your academy going to look like? Um, how many courts will you have? Will you have other coaches out there? Um, what's a, a, a day in the life of, of uh, Johan Creek Tennis Academy student going to look like? Well, let me put it this way. I'm, 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 I'm leaving Charlotte with also a heavy heart because there are some incredible parents here and there's some great kids here and I'm, uh, I'm working diligently on creating something by which they can come and, uh, and, and still participate with us and I, I can be involved with their kids because they are some really good talent. So uh, it's, it's, it's not just, you know, it, this is not easy to move from, one, from, a, from a facility. But uh, the 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 options and the and the future that I have at PGA National with everything that they have on the ground there is just is is, is fun it's phenomenal actually very very fortunate to be in that position. Having said that, like any other business, you got to start from somewhere. And we like I said already have clients. I have international clients that are coming with me, and so we will be small to start with, and just go methodically about it. Like I said, every day, and I I know it's going to be a deluge in August of phone calls and people saying, oh, my God, we're back to school and where are we going to go take our kids to a, a tennis facility, blah, blah, blah. So that is, it's going to be a bit of an avalanche coming, and I'm going to have to be very careful because I don't want to overpromise and under, under, underperform. But it's always, from my, from, my, from my perspective, is to go about it very methodically, talk to the parents, what are their goals, you know, and do an assessment with the children or child. So I go about it very methodically, and uh, we have coaches that are going with me from here, and there are coaches that want to join us that I will make part of our organization as we as we grow. Uh, there's quite a few staff at PJ National that are already doing some great work with juniors, and that's uh, an ongoing discussion with them about how they want to join us. So it's all in a very, very methodical, very positive, uh, very fruitful way will we move forward. But I'm not going to jump in and say, this, you know, we're going to have 100 kids. No, we're going to build this methodically and do it well, and um, not everybody's going to be able to get into the academy. So what are going to be the criteria for for choosing players to come work with you? Well, first of all, we um, I have two toddlers. I have a four- and a six-year-old, and they're going to school. So we have a, a deal with a the school there that uh, we're going to help them with their little tennis program. they got some courts, too. So it's just a, it's, it's a great thing. So I will have definitely some quick starts, some under-10s, and uh, we will have, um, you know, elite kids that are in their 12s, 14s for, uh, for, for grooming, for hopefully professional. And uh, then there are going to be college kids that are going to call and say, listen, you know, we want to come and, and train for a month or we want to come for a week. So that's a part of my business that I want to grow big time because we have not had the opportunity to do that in Charlotte because I just didn't have the facilities. So the college-bound athlete to train and maybe get some videos done for them and, you know, not too many coaches – uh, tennis colleges uh, turn my phone calls down when I call them about a child. So uh, I get college co- coaches calling me all the time. Do you have any girls? Do you have any guys? You know, if you if you have uh, good players and they want to look at colleges, please give us a call. So they reach out to me. So that's going to be a big part of our business down the road as well. And and so again, what what will a typical day look like at your academy for the players? Well, first of all, we have kids that are coming with us. There's going to be two training sessions. There'll be a sort of homeschool program from noon on till say, 3, and then there's going to be another program from 4 to 7. So most of the 4 to 7s will be after-school programs. 
for quality players and uh, and then also uh, as we as we get uh, further down the road obviously we will do more and more uh, adult stuff as well uh, with a resort and also some corporate events for tennis so they are all looking at a at a full range of events uh, to accomplish uh, some of the things that the resort want to accomplish with their with their clients so it's going to be a pretty wide variety of businesses that we're going to attach to the tennis part uh, like you said you know golf is a big thing at PGA National but uh, the tennis has been uh, uh, developed to a great extent with memberships and stuff and they have a very vibrant membership there in the thousands but in terms of the academy side of things it is very very new so we are uh, very fortunate to be there and be able to fit into that slot between 12 and 7 so from noon to 7 which is what you want to practice anyway because it's so hot but um, we are uh, we have we have 20 courts to work with. Uh, I have a set amount of courts that I can use every day, but we can always add more as we as we grow. So if I want to bring my women's team down for a girls' weekend, we can do that. Give us a call. Give us a call. We'll oh, set it up. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a blast. set it all up. You know, it's always fun to uh, to you know. I mean, I've I've done so many corporate things in my life. I've played so many exhibitions. Uh, you know, I still do the do the the fundraising stuff for some of these uh, big corporations and stuff so uh, it's uh, it, it's always been fun and so we will do some adult stuff fantasy camps weekend getaways valentine's weekend you name it there's there's going to be a program down the road for all of that stuff i love it will there be an off court fitness training component to your academy yes. or will that just be something separate no it's uh, definitely we will be in house as well but, uh, you know, there's, there's incredible fitness people around the PGA National, but we're going to do a lot of stuff in-house first and then see how we grow. And if it needs to be off-premise off as well, that's an option as well. Fantastic. So if somebody is interested in coming to train with you, what do they need to do? They need to talk to my wife. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my my wife does all my admin, and, uh, you know, I have such a busy schedule. I mean, I work with the kids every day. I'm there every day uh, working with the kids. And, uh, you know, so if they want to reach out, uh, they can go info at johancreektennis.com, info at johancreektennis.com, or they can call my wife at uh, 941 914 It's a Florida number. I've never given it. Never changed it. So it's 941-914-6054, and uh, they can get all the information from Daga about uh, spots. She does all the admin, all the PR. She does an incredible job. Besides being a mom, she does four people's jobs here. So, um, But she has a master's in PR. She's a smart one, so uh, I'm, just a, I'm just a bull striker. <laughs> I will attest to Daga's <laughs> talents. And uh, on top of that, she's a very sweet human being. So... Um, so those of you listening that are interested in taking your kids down to train with Johan, definitely reach out to her. And I know she'll, she's very responsive. She's, I, I think she's connected intravenously to the Internet because every time I've reached out to her, I've gotten an immediate response. She's, she's, she's incredible. incredible. I mean, it's just, she's amazing. She's the IT department, the mom, the driver. Uh, I mean, the the PR person, uh, the internet PR, I mean, it's incredible. She does an amazing job. So uh, couldn't have couldn't have asked for a better wife and a better mom and a better partner in the business. But, yeah, we are going to grow over the next two, three years down there in PGA National to extend far exceeding anything I've done before. But like I said, it's got to be methodical. It's got to be well planned out. And I, I, I can't wait to do this parental uh, seminar so that people can come and uh, – and listen to what uh, what the real deal is, you know. And um, it's so easy for me and you to talk about it. But, you know, parents have come into this world and been in there for a couple of years. They, they're they still very much green in this business. And, uh, you know, it's just good for people to know. To know. And uh, it, 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 it can avert a tremendous amount of heartache and cost if you just know what's coming. For sure. And, you know, what's interesting is even if you are armed with information, Every kid is so different, and every stage of the process presents a new set of challenges. So when you think, you know, just when you think you're over the hump, um, something else happens. They, you know, there's an injury or an illness, God forbid, or, you know, there's some burnout to deal with or some competing interests like girlfriends and boyfriends and parties and proms and <laughs> things of Absolutely. that matter. So, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's a 
a constant learning process. And so, um, you know, I, I'm thrilled that you're going to incorporate that piece of things into your academy. And, and again, I, I would be honored to be part of it. So definitely count me in. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how things grow down there with you, Johan. I, I, it's very exciting. And, and I know the Charlotte community is sad to be losing you because when you announced that you were moving there, there was a lot of buzz around it. And um, people were pretty pumped about about having someone of your stature there to work with their kids. And uh, hopefully those folks will be able to keep their connection with you and, um, you know, cheer you on from no, absolutely. Art, but no, I've learned a lot. I mean, look, I, uh, I'm a professional athlete, and I've been in this coaching business now for uh, about close to 10 years, and uh, you learn all the time. Uh, it, it never ends. And if, if you think you know it all, you've you got a bigger ego than you deserve. So you learn all the time. I've made mistakes. I've learned from them. I move on. And, uh, you know, it's just difficult. Like I said, the, the weather systems in the Carolinas, it's, it's a tough thing in the wintertime, you know, and uh, – Funny enough, Charlotte does not have a lot of in, uh, indoor facilities, and uh, I was at the biggest indoor facility in, in Charlotte. But, you know, uh, attitudes change, different di- business deals come up, and, uh, you know, I hope that in the future Charlotte can really up the ante with its tennis programming and, and facilities, and I know Lifetime Fitness is coming in here and building something. So uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of upside to be happening here in Charlotte in the future, but... Uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be back in Florida. I look forward to it. I know that state really well. And like I said, I'm, I'll be happy to discuss with you, Lisa, and with others uh, to put this type of thing together in a short, short order because I think it's extremely um, – it, it, it's one of the most vital parts of tennis that I think is very neglected is the, uh, the, the training for parents and, the, uh, and, and just a learning curve for parents to understand what's coming. Sure, sure. Well, Johan, thanks so much for coming on today. I am, um, I, I always love chatting with you and I always learn from you and I'm so grateful that you're willing to share your experiences with all of us. And so I just want to wish you the best as you make this move down to Florida. And I know your kids are going to love it. I've seen enough photos of them in the water and out in the sunshine to know that they are beach kids and will be very, very happy down in the Florida sunshine. Um, so best of luck to all of you as you make your move. And, you know, whatever we can do here at Parenting Aces, you know, I'm always on board. So definitely just ask, and I, I'm pretty sure I'll say yes. Absolutely. No, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you, and uh, I hope that uh... – you know, parents know we are going to be down there in PGA National. It's a beautiful area, so look forward to seeing you there. So thanks again, uh, Lisa, and I'll be in touch, and uh, let's let's get the ball rolling with uh, doing a better job with all of our parents and make everybody uh, happier parents and happier tennis players, happier families. Sounds, <laughs> it sounds perfect. Thank you so much. To my You're listeners, welcome. thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you all have a great week. I am going to be heading out to the BB&T Atlanta tournament, which is a stop on the U.S. Open Series. And I'll be out there, actually, I'm heading there as soon as we go off air today to cover the wild card playoff semis and tomorrow the finals. And the qualies start this weekend. So it's going to be an exciting, hot week here in Atlanta, but I hope you'll follow along with the BB&T, and hopefully I'll be broadcasting live from the tournament next week. So stay tuned to our Facebook page for updates in that regard. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week on Parenting Aces. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of a drill instructor directing a musical. Town hut! Get those tap heels in line and let me see those jazz hands! Are you bundling your home and auto insurance through Progressive? Can you hear me through those sequins? Bundle your home and auto through Progressive and save. Left, 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 and step ball change. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates. Home insurance provided and serviced by other select insurers. It's the final week of the Mega Mattress Event at Ashley Home Store. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Pay no interest for eight years on queen mattresses from Tempur-Pedic and iComfort. Both starting at just $21 a month. Or save up to $1,000 on select queen mattresses from Beautyrest and Sealy Posturepedic. Hurry in now for the Mega Mattress Event. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store. This is home. Offer subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payment required. See store for details.